George Washington Carver. We was talking about that earlier. George Washington Carver, <coughs> my sister was talking about it. Who all know the history of George Washington Carver? Or who know the story of George Washington Carver? The peanut farmer from Tuskegee. Okay. Anybody? Any of my white brothers and sisters know? Oh, my white brothers and sisters. Yes, my mother. Well, I know a little bit about it. I've been to Tuskegee and I studied up in one uh, part of the high school. Uh, obviously, uh, as an agricultural scientist, he was, uh, had a profound impact on, uh, on agriculture in, in this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the educational institution that's named after him was a testament. This is Jim. He's a proud hotel owner. Was a testament to his uh, interest in uh, an educated community. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's good enough. Yeah, so this is Jim. Problems. He's a proud hotel owner, but Jim is frustrated. And there's so, another thing about. So, he was, wait. Okay. So um, he was a, he was raised and adopted by uh, a white couple, and uh, they uh, had him castrated. Uh, so that he won't sleep with their daughters. And if you've ever heard a recording of him, his voice is very, very high, which made him an outcast, even when he was at the university. Uh, people questioned his, his gender, his sexuality, a whole bunch of things. But it was because of when he was growing up, he was castrated. Most people don't know that. Can I uh, add to that? Backstory, George Washington Carver was born a slave. He and his mother, with him as an infant, were kidnapped by slavers <coughs> from the owner, quote unquote, uh, in Missouri. The owner posted a reward for the return. The mother was never found. Carver was retrieved as an infant by his couple. He was raised by them, and, and according to this gentleman tonight, I clarified his age at which he was castrated and the reason in their thinking. Uh, he subsequently became one of the first black graduates of the University of Iowa, earning his doctorate, uh, and then affiliated with Booker T. Washington's Tuskegee Institute in Alabama where he also made his income, side income, from going around lecturing various farmer groups uh, and being fairly well paid according to the standards at that time because when the banks crashed, when they crashed, they told him, mm -hmm. he lost $80,000, <coughs> which is a good sum even now. Right. <laughs> One of his uh, associates of Tuskegee came up to him and offered you know, condolences on his loss. And Dr. Carver said to him, and I consider this a deeply spiritual insight. That's why I re remember it. <clears throat> well, apparently, I didn't need it. I wasn't using it. <laughs> Thank you. And many of his formulas have been used in industry because Henry Ford in Detroit asked Carver to come to Detroit to develop an artificial rubber for the during the Second World War. Dr. Carver said, oh, that sounds very interesting, but I can't come because my laboratory is down here in Tuskegee. Henry Ford replied to him, that's OK, I'll build you one up here in Greenfield Village. Right. And it's still there. That's right. Um, that's right. So a man of outstanding intelligence and applications also an artist who made his own paint pigments from flowers. It's one of the best books on him is the man who talked flowers. I don't recall his name. And it wasn't his uh, rubber uh, soybean base? Yeah, soybean base. Yes, yeah. sir. And, and you know what, guys? That's why, this, that's why history and knowledge is so important, guys, because most of us, especially, man, when you go to high school, go to elementary school, junior high school, high school, you think about it now, you can get a PhD in America and learn nothing about black history. Nothing. 
You can't get a GED in America without learning something about white history, man. That's on the real tip. I, I mean, I'm, just, I'm passionate about this. Listen. Dr. Carter's formulations are still on file with his associate, Dr. Austin Curtis, at Curtis Laboratories in Detroit. And I was intrigued about that because I grew up around the corner from Curtis Laboratories. Awesome. And on top of that, different civilizations. That's why it's so important to read. That's why it's so important for our children to go outside of their communities and outside of the box. Because once you understand real history, the true stories, then you see we are more in common than we are not. Once you understand about great civilizations before yours, when we think about we, are, we got it going on, once you understand what other people have developed, you think about it at one time in the world, People were sitting back for thousands of years, y'all, just sitting up, checking out the stars, coming up with mapping the solar system, y'all, just mapping the stars, y'all, just sitting back chilling. I mean, they weren't fighting, weren't tripping. They were just eating uh, mangoes and having a good time, and they were butt naked. They was cool. But they, they, they was cool. What well, more point I'm just saying? Well, we're These three wise men who follow the star to find Jesus. How do you follow the star for 12, over 1,200 miles and how many days? Because they had been told it was going to happen. And so obviously they had studied astronomy and astrology Come on. at the great institution. Timbuktu. That was in Africa. But we don't know. They preferred it to come from the east. So that would have thrown them into Iran and Iraq. Well, yeah, and Mesopotamia. Yeah, yeah, which we had just helped to destroy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But they followed this star that was interesting because that star stopped right in the right place. But they had known about it for years. Yes, and when the king complained of his own wise men, he said, How come I'm, I don't know about it? They said, We thought you did. Yeah. And uh, what I want to add to that, guys, is the beauty of learning about different cultures is so powerful, man, because once you understand about the Olmecs or the Aztecs or the Mesopotamian or Songhai or Mali, what you realize, man, is that more cultures, all of us basically want some of the basic same things, guys. And because thousands of years ago, y'all think, may think about but having a camel or some cow, you wrote, you the man. You, you, you got it going on. And you think about being able to develop, going out into the jungle and understanding what the jungle, the values of the different plants, understanding what the trees are for. I mean, in certain cultures, the people respected the environment. They didn't go out and abuse and just kill an animal and put it on the wall. No, no, no. They respected every element of that environment because they were in tune with God. We have lost our mind as human beings in the 21st century. As far as all we want to do is like cancer. Just like, just consume, 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 and don't realize we are destroying the planet. This is it. God, don't get it twisted. This is it. We ain't going nowhere else. I mean, we keep thinking we, this is it. And what we have to do, guys, is why I think it's so important for us to understand our history and how we connect it, because I think it helps start to eliminate when you guys go back to your own communities and your own environments, then you guys can start telling the real story. See, we tell stories about each other that are not true. We label each other, they are not true. A black person does this, or a black person is lazy, or a black person is a criminal. All that stuff, guys, from day one is a lie. That has been perpetuated a lie. They did a study. They did a study. They did, uh, this is crazy. They did a study at Harvard, Harvard University, watching the time. I'm not going to read all of it because I'm going to. But basically, what the study did is they did a study. They asked these students to sit out and watch television for 6, 12, and 24 hours. And they asked them, we want you guys to look at all of the black, all people of color, African Americans. How many times do you see them on any television program, news, media, whatever it may be, in a positive or negative light? For six, 
6, 12, and 24 hours. What they found was totally unacceptable, in my opinion. I mean, but it, it, just, it just says what we are doing in our society. It says basically, and I'm just going to use, I'm just going to give you some of uh, From the perspective of most scholars who focus on the topic, there's a clear and casual story that links media representation of black people in the real world outcome. The story can be summarized as follows. The various reason media of all types collectively offer a distorted representation of the lives of black people. In turn, media, com uh, media negatively affects the public understanding and attitudes related to black people, sometimes including the understanding and attitudes of black people themselves. Finally, these distorted understanding and attitudes toward black people leads to negative real world consequences for them. Taken as a whole, this rich area of study, which many scholars believe is central to the understanding of addressing the stubborn challenge faced by black people in American society, note that many studies refer to race without implicitly addressing gender, but many patterns such as the um, aggravated association with violence, sports, are clearly more relevant to black males and females. For the advocate and other communicators concerned with issues related to black people achievement, it is important to be sharply aware of this story and finding that support it so that they can address the problem in any informed way. What's your word? I like that conversion. Once you feel, uh, so you know, I'm going to share a little bit of this and then we're going to uh, kind of close it up. I have a question have about asked. the prison situation. Yes, ma'am. First of all, I think one of the reasons America has had problems in reforming the prison system is because we have to decide whether we're sending people to prison to rehabilitate them or to punish them. But when she talks about this prison system, I'm wondering, has, has she or anyone else that you know of broken down the statistics of the people who are imprisoned, particularly the males, into those who went in for drug problems, if so, what kind of drug problems, or those who went in for assault? Yes, ma'am, we have those statistics. 70% okay. of the people in prison today are not in the drug trials. Those range from marijuana possession all the way up to meth. Right now, the whole concept of war on drugs, when it was instituted back with Reagan, Ronald Reagan and everything, Ronald Reagan, as much as people want to brag about Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, along with all of the North, brought drugs into America. The federal government brought drugs into this country. The prison system is not broken. It was designed at one time in America, a black person didn't go to prison. We were lynched or killed. We didn't go to prison. So let's get this straight. The American prison system was designed basically for, like you just said about white people at one time, but it wasn't designed for black people. They used to, if we, when every drama jumped off, they would come and lynch us and get us out of the jail because most often the sheriff, the police, all of them was in cahoots, just like down in Mississippi, the chain of living is wrong again. The sheriff department was the one that killed those boys. It was a freedom right. The bottom line is the prison system is designed at one time we had convict leasing. That means after emancipation, after 1862, if you got caught, you were loitering or didn't have a job, didn't have papers, didn't have ID, I could arrest you, put you in a camp where you would make coal or make steel for the rest of your life. Your people would never know what happened to you. I have some family members in the South that disappeared. We never knew what happened to them. Couldn't go to the sheriff and nobody asked about it. That's real talk when it's passed out in our family. So the prison system they talk about is not broken. The prison system in America today, the prison system today are on a Fortune 500. Michael Jordan has stopped in prison. If all you guys have 401ks and pensions, many of your pension funds are against stopped in prison. Prisons are designed, most of them now they want 98% occupancy, and it is designed, again, to make sure that I can control, but even in controlling those people that I have in there, I'm going to make sure that these people
people make products. So right now we have prisons across America that are making products for many corporations whose products we consume on a daily basis have learned that prison labor power can be as profitable as third world labor power exploited by U.S. based global corporations. Both regulated formerly unionized workers to joblessness and many even wind up in prison. Some of the companies use prison labor are IBM, Motorola, Compact, Texas M Instrument, Honeywell, Neiman and Marcus, Microsoft, Boeing, North Trump, Gump Grumman, uh, Sean John, uh, um, Sean John, um, what's it called? Dublin, Dublin, Ross, uh, Victoria's Secret, Whole Foods, um, Sears, uh, Walmart, anyways, Pierre Cartier, Revlon. So what's happening is you have people in prison that are working, making less than 25 cents a day, that are producing products that could be jobs for people that are out in the community. The answer to this prison industrial complex is to close the prisons. We need to be more equitable and fair. Why are we locking up people with drug problems? Right now, we got white people that are dealing with heroin and meth problems. They're not locking white kids up. They got police right now in their vehicles. They got medication. They help white kids if they overdose. They didn't have that for black kids back in the, when you talk about war on, war on drugs. How do you have a war on drugs when that's part of your GNP? America, we use more drugs than anybody else on the planet. America use more drugs than anybody on the planet. We produce, we use more of the world energy than anybody else on the planet. We see you 65% of the world's energy. We lock up. 25 cents, we lock up 25% of our population and we are only 5% of the world population. China has 1.7 billion people locked up less than 700,000 of their people. India has 1.9 billion people. 400,000 people are locked up in India. In China, when you get out of prison in China, you got to have a career. People get out of prison in China, they become doctors, lawyers, all that kind of stuff, y'all. And one thing, the answer to a lot of this, we can just simply devise our policies to be more fair. One thing that we don't do as a people, we can go in front of people and we can pretend and we can act out a certain behavior, but we go back to our claims. They no good. You see a black person come and you lock your door. Or you, a black person move in your community and you leave. I mean, it is so sad when you look at the history and the progression of what we've done as a people. And how right now there are 10 golf courses in Michigan. Tiger Woods cannot play on them because they're private golf courses. Just because you got Tiger Woods, you can't play here. Because this is a private golf course. And when you have private golf courses, just like Charter School, she was talking about private school. Charter schools were designed, I mean, Charter schools were designed in my opinion, if you research it, they are like hedge funds or for the shareholders. It is designed to provide an education at the cheapest or at the most streamlined as possible. I recall when I come from Chicago, I went to public school here at Blue Eye Mines. We got free instrument, my, we was in all of my programs. I took drama, I took singing, I didn't even know. I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning trying to sing because over in Chicago, we weren't able to do that. But coming over here, man, we had all these programs, man. Cook, wood shop, milk shop, uh, uh, learning how to sew, learning how to cook. I mean, all those kinds of things, man. And that's what children need today. They need, you never know, everybody's not going to be a doctor or a boy or a nuclear physics. Somebody's going to be good with art and music. Somebody's going to be good with botany. But if you don't teach me by me, then you say I'm a bad little boy. You put me over here, you put me and track me in this area because I behave. I don't know what my behavior is because I haven't got, I haven't found my talent or my gift. All of our children are gifts. All of us are a blessing. We just need to be lining up and a lot of us need to be more in tune with God.